Today, we are diving into a no-nonsense guide of EDC first aid. There is a lot of just nonsense to mull about out there in the YouTube sphere, I think, when it comes to EDC kits and first aid. We did a EDC kit video with Jamie, and he was talking about some of the first aid stuff he carries, and he mentioned that uh, he had been a working paramedic in a past life, and a lot of you guys wanted to see Jamie's hot take on EDC first aid stuff. I've got a couple opinions, not nearly as, I'm gonna be very loosely used the term expert, <laughs> Jamie hasn't been in practice for a while, but he keeps kind of up on all that stuff. And we're gonna be looking at kind of three different phases. So we're gonna be looking at boo-boo kits, just keep life comfortable, help people around you on the basic needs that most of us are encounter 99% of the time. Then we're gonna look at some IFAC stuff. If you don't know what that is, hold on, it gets exciting. And then we're gonna get to this big granddaddy right here. And we're gonna be talking about what you need to know to be able to even think about carrying something like this. And uh, we're gonna do a pocket knife tracheotomy live, right? Absolutely. Because that's like a real thing that you should be doing in the world, right? We're not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> when we're talking boo-boo kit, what do we mean? We need to make sure we separate a couple terms here. So we have, like you said, yeah. boo-boo kit. These are just gonna be your normal everyday ouches. I cut my finger, I scrape my knee. I got a headache, I got a tummy right. ache. These are not life-saving kits. Yes. Okay? Yes. Let's get that out of the way right now. Yeah. We've had a few comments of like, oh, that doesn't have a tourniquet or didn't have this. We're talking about boo-boo kits in this level. So this is my magic plastic bag. I love it. We've had a lot of conversations about the magic plastic right. bag. <laughs> Everything that you're gonna see in here is what I am gonna carry in my EDC kit. So what's in a good boo-boo kit? kit. Well, I mean, the first thing you can probably think of is band-aids, right? So we have some big band-aids, we have some small band-aids, we have some mole skin, we have some butterfly wound enclosures, yep. and then I think a lot of people sleep on the whole gauze issue because if you get a cut, you need a way to apply a little pressure and stop some bleeding and wipe up some of that blood, right? Yeah. So I have some two by two gauze pads in here. I think there's three of them in here. I then have a couple different types of pads in here. A couple things you need, sting and bite pads. Yep. These are great. Super you helpful. Know, you get a bee stings and fire ant bites you. You can take care of that. This helps ease the pain. Just the quality of life improver. Yep. Alcohol prep pads. These are for things and not open wounds. So we don't want to put alcohol on open wounds. I know that goes against everything that everybody has ever been taught. Something, but... something that I learned from Jamie and his experience. Uh, apparently it can cause some tissue damage. Yeah. But I just love pouring like hydrogen peroxide on a wound because you know it's really clean. Don't put alcohol. <laughs> don't put don't put hydrogen peroxide on open wounds. Right. There, uh, I mean, it is a way to sterilize wounds, but it can cause tissue damage. Right. Let's not do that. That's why yeah. we have these BZK wipes. Okay, so you have some topicals in there to yeah. clean said wounds, so make sure you have that. Well, and I'll say really quick on the topicals, having a little bit of burn relief, having a little bit of sting relief, right? And then obviously ways to clean up cuts and stuff like mm -hmm. that, super valuable, yep. right? Like I was riding my motorcycle once in a big group and I got stung by a bee while riding the motorcycle, right? I'm not allergic allergic, but my skin, like I definitely react, right? Yeah, for sure. So pulled over, had my kit on me, pulled out the sting relief, put it on, didn't ruin the ride, which was so nice. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of your towel topicals, yeah. I guess. These are more topicals that I have in here. So I have some burn cream in here. I have some hydrocortisone and I have some triple antibiotic ointment. So a little bag of, you know, cream topicals, I guess. Yeah. And then I have a little baggie of medication. So in here is aspirin, there's Tylenol, there's ibuprofen, there's Benadryl, there's some diarrhea relief stuff and maybe a couple other things depending on what you need personally yeah. if you have. Prescriptions, it's probably a good idea to carry a couple pills of that in case you forget your you know, larger prescription bottles. So obviously tailor it to you. So. Well, and that's the thing is I think, I think a way to deal with some pain, mm -hmm. way to deal with headaches, right? Just like things that get in your road on the daily, right? A way to deal with, with an upset tummy mm -hmm. and it's probably some cold medicine, right? Because right? those things can hit you while you're out and about. And that's kind of the whole point of your EDC kit is to keep you right. comfortable and moving when you're not at your house, yeah. right? And, and I think the other thing, a big philosophy that we have here on the channel is being able to help other people mm -hmm. as well, right? Like I have, so in my in my little uh, first aid kit that I carry around with me, I carry my stuff just in a little Altoids tin, right? So these are just loose pills. And then inside I have a little, uh, I have a little like key for what's what, right? On this particular one. I definitely have used like headache pills and stomach pills and stuff for other people way more than ever for myself. Exactly. So it's I, nice just to be able to help people, right? Have something boo-boo kit, right? I've definitely stolen an ibuprofen or two out of that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, uh, that's your basic boo-boo kit. Yeah. Again, not a life-saving kit. It's just a quality of life improver and to have with you at all times. Doesn't require any special training. Nope. Not really, right? Like if, if you're an adult, chances are you put a Band-Aid on. Yep. Right? So good to go. Simple stuff. like. Yep. Medications, directions are right there on the packet. Yep. That would be kind of tier one, right? Super easy, don't really need any special things. You don't really need paramedic experience to do anything with this. Now, I think this is where I think a lot of us get really interested. 
Let's jump into IFAC. Right? Yeah. What does IFAC mean? It stands for Individual First Aid Kit. Now here enters, I think, what we could call a life-saving kit. Right. Right. Now, this comes with not only, you know, the venerable tourniquet that we all hear about and may or may not know how to use, but more importantly, this comes with a, almost a responsibility if you're gonna carry a kit like this mm -hmm. and having the right training. Correct. So let's just take five seconds. I know that you did a bunch on this. Um, I stay up on my stop the bleed stuff. I stay up on my CPR stuff. I do a little bit more advanced stuff on the CPR. Every couple of years I'll go and like jump into a course, but you found a pretty good resource, didn't you? Right. Prep Medic has an amazing video on training courses that you can take kind of from the most basic to the most advanced as a lay person. And I think that's really good for, you know, if you're not law enforcement, if you're not a paramedic, if you're not fire, if you're not first responders, those courses are great for a lay person. So go check out Prep Medic's video on that. We'll have a link down in the description. In a trauma situation, there's some things in this kit that you wanna have training for. So some good, just basic training to have is go do a stop the bleed course. Yep. It'll just show you how to use packing gauze, how to stop bleeding, how to use the tourniquet. One of the main functions of this kit. And then I think everybody should also go take a CPR course oh, as well. Yeah. This is what people in the biz call an IFAC, a blowout kit, whatever you wanna call it, right? So kind of some of your items in order of most important to least important. So on the outside, I have a tourniquet. This is a cat tourniquet. I got the orange one because I'm not tactical. I wanna be visible. I want the tourniquet to be visible. Yeah, if you get a black tourniquet and you're in a stressful situation because 99% of us hopefully will never have to deal with that, right? Yeah. And you're in a stressful situation and you set your black tourniquet on the black asphalt at an ax car accident or something and you can't find it because you're in duress, just get the high visible. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go high vis. Not a place to be tactical. Not if you're tactical, tactical, you know who you are and you get the tactical stuff. For everybody right. else, let's yep. get high vis. That's a tourniquet. One of the things of highest importance when it comes to a life-saving kit. The other thing kind of along the same vein as a tourniquet of importance, I actually really like this bag too, we'll talk about that in a second, that I have right here on top is your packing gauze. You can do a couple different options for packing gauze. This is combat gauze. It's impregnated with click clot. It helps clot wounds just a little bit faster than just kind of your normal standard packing gauze. This is very expensive. It's, this is like $35 right. for but, this piece of gauze. But we're also talking about yeah. a life, right? right. Like, but, you can do, if if that's for some reason a problem for you, yeah. like you can get regular old packing gauze, it's like three bucks. Yeah, so yeah. I, that's in my kit, I have regular old packing gauze. I, do you not have quick clot in yours? It might, oh, I might be wrong. I might've got the quick, oh, I do. I got quick clot, I like it, go. I'm sorry. I have more, more of those, so I'm yeah. <laughs> My next thing is a pressure dressing slash another tourniquet. So this is a SWAT T. This is basically a big rubber band. Yeah. Not only can you use this as a tourniquet, you can also use this just to wrap, you know, venous bleed, or whatever needs to be wrapped. Right? What's a venous bleed? When we're talking about massive hemorrhage, we're talking about arterial blood, that's spurting blood. Mm -hmm. That's the type of thing you need to get that packing gauze in there if it's a junctional site or get the tourniquet on if it's arm or leg. Now, you can see Jamie is using special terms. So we're gonna stress again, if you're gonna carry this kit, get the right training. You're of no use to anybody if you don't know how to use the stuff in the kit. And I, and I think that's a thing that happens a lot. I, I, we're all guilty of it, right? Especially when it comes to like maybe like knives or multi-tools or whatever. But when we're talking about first aid and we're talking about life-saving stuff, it does no good if you watched a video on YouTube and you've never actually done the thing. <laughs> so get the training. Kind of farther on down here, I've got the gloves are off to the side. So obviously if you can apply gloves right. before you get into a situation, absolutely do that. Your skin actually does provide a pretty good barrier as long as it's unbroken against cool. bloodborne pathogens. Good. So just keep that in mind. And even if you do have, you know, broken skin or a small scratch or something like that, your chances are still relatively low. It's not zero, so obviously put gloves on put gloves if you on. can, yeah. but don't worry too much if you do end up getting blood on your hands. We have a Sharpie, always write the time on your tourniquet when you apply it, that's very important. And then I have a couple other things down here. So I have some gauze, this is a four by fours, which are just four by four square gauze, and then a combine pad, which is just a little bit thicker, more absorbent. So if we're trying to do, you know, take care of some bigger venous bleeds or whatever, mm -hmm. we can wrap it with a combine pad and a SWAT T. Mylar blanket because hypothermia kills and trauma. So people get very cold when they have traumatic events. So even if you're, you're probably not gonna be cold, but your patient might be. So make sure you keep people warm. The next thing down, I have an NPA, which is a nasal pharyngeal airway. This is just a standard 28 French. So for normal people, like right. for this specific kit, that's what I had space for, right? Yeah. Like I don't have a 20 French for peds, pediatrics. I, I'm just kind of going for the broadest stroke when it comes to right. the people that I'm gonna be, be encountering, right? Yeah. Uh, Cause there's always trade-offs. 
first aid kits are all about trade-offs. Yeah. Well, and especially when we're talking about sizes, right? Like we start really small with the boo-boo kit, mm -hmm. right? And then we step up to something that's a standalone throat in a backpack type situation. But again, it's not this big, right? And you don't want to carry this in a backpack around every single day, no. right? That is a backpack. Yeah, that is a backpack, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> of only gear. So this is a 28 French pre-lubed nasal pharyngeal airway. Make sure you learn how to put this in. And then the last thing I have kind of on here is chest seals. These are hyphen chest seals, so if you have a, a gunshot wound or something to the chest, you can seal it up. It has a front and a back, so entry exit wound, mm -hmm. and you can basically prevent tension pneumothorax, which is your lung being crushed by air. Air in the place it shouldn't yeah. be. Air in the place it shouldn't be. It's not in your lungs, it's around your lungs. So we're kind of getting into, like I said, we're going from most important to least important. Yeah. Like, by far, the thing that kills the most amount of people in a traumatic event that's preventable is hemorrhage, blood loss. Right. So make sure you're able to take care of that and then go down the list from there. That kind of brings me to the bottom of this kit. I think just kind of some other tertiary things. I have some rolled gauze in here. This is just kind of for that less minor stuff. Like if I need to just roll on one of the four by the fours or something to a cut or something like that, yeah. I can do that. Something that I can't keep in my boo-boo kit, which if you'll notice, I have my boo-boo kit right here. It's This is the same exact boo-boo kit yep. as what I just talked about. So I have that in the bottom here. The only thing I would love to have in here that I can't find room for is a roll of tape. I want a uh, roll of tape. Yeah, in yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> so I have to figure out how to stick that in here. I got, I'll figure it out somehow. It's just like a skinny roll of cloth tape would be nice. Yeah. So I'll figure out how to put that in there. And then of course I have on the side here, some trauma shears. These are not the best trauma shears. They came with this bag. I'm gonna put some Leatherman Raptor Rescues in yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little bit more compact. That kind of rounds out this kit. Now this bag is by Vanquist. I think it's their four by six pack that they have. So I got this bag from Medical Gear Outfitters. It came packed with some first aid-ish supplies, but not a trauma kit. They have a really cool vacuum packed micro trauma kit, which is most of the trauma supplies that are in this kit. Right. I just stole out of their micro trauma kit. I put it in this bag. I added a cat tourniquet and a couple other doodads. So that's how I made this particular kit. I think you can get the larger version of this. So like the five by seven or five by eight version of this mm -hmm. in a full IFAC life-saving blowout kit, whatever you want to call it. Right. So make sure you check out that it's under Medical Gear Outfitters, or you can go to Vanquist's site too and get this. And now correct me if I'm wrong, but I know for me personally, uh, throughout the years when I've looked to buy a kit, buy any kit, right? Personally, I've found that like, there's just so much redundancy or honestly just stuff that like, you're never gonna use or stuff that, that you're not trained to use or whatever, or, or not good gear, right? Like, like not, a, not, not the type of tourniquet that you want that what I found throughout the years of looking is I've kind of just had to piecemeal my kits together. And it seems like as you've kind of built this stuff out and you were, you went through all this, was that kind of what your experience was as well? It's hard to find like a single kit that's just like, boom, this is it. Yeah, they're, they're definitely out there. Yeah. Um, I think kits are very personal as well, depending yeah. on what you're comfortable using. Yeah. So keep that in mind as well. This first aid kit came with like, it had like two triangle bandages right. in it and like a couple rolled gauze. It wasn't, particularly very great. It had kind of a sort of boo-boo kit, but there it was lacking some stuff. So yeah. I wasn't really impressed with the kit that came in this, but I was pretty impressed with the micro trauma kit that I ended up putting in yeah. here. Cool. And that's kind of when we're talking about this EDC philosophy, right? Like boo-boo kit, and you can have all of that just in your regular EDC kit, which we're huge proponents of. Something like this, obviously, that requires backpack. Right? So if you're carrying an EDC kit, chances are you're probably carrying a backpack as well. So you could throw that in if you have the training to do it. Now, there are some interesting things that I thought we should bring up when it got to this life-saving kit. So mm -hmm. two things specifically, you mentioned like triangle benches, right? Right. Now I know that when I was a Boy Scout, like I always had like, a, like you know, a wrap, a bandage I could wrap an ankle with or whatever, right? And then as I got older and I got a little more training, I realized you don't really need Right? Yeah. Would you agree with that sentiment? Yeah, it's like you, there's different levels. Like you could follow the rabbit hole of, of treating of stuff all the way yeah. down, and then you yeah. have a first aid kit that this. That's yeah, this exactly. Aid, right? Exactly. On the level of priority, when yeah. it comes to making an actual difference uh, for patient outcomes, a triangle bandage is very far right. down the list. <laughs> it could be a quality of life thing, right. sure. Yeah. But like, it's not an important thing to stick in this particular kit if you're trying to keep something small. Right. right? For sure. Yeah, and then the other thing that I think is really interesting is, uh, so I, and this is a conversation that me and Jamie had before we started filming. Um, I carry, I've always carried super glue in my kit, mm -hmm. always. Um, and I use super glue regularly. Like if I get a if I get a deep cut, like 
probably needs stitches, I will, it's just liquid stitch. I'll just literally glue it. Now, I know that regular super glue is not the gold standard, right? No, so and Jamie like dove into this. So give us like, give us like a 20 second history of super glue and then tell us what we should be using. Uh, so super glue started to be used on wounds in the Vietnam War. Correct. And they use just regular, that's just straight up super yeah, glue. Yeah, like, right? like you buy like super glue, crazy glue, the, what I've been using for years in my own cuts. Super glue has two problems potentially. When it cures, it, it is exothermic, so it does get hot. So yep. you could potentially damage tissue if you use super glue. There's a concern with wound healing and maybe scarring with, yep. with super glue. Yep. So just keep that in mind. There's also, as it cures, it releases formaldehyde and one other chemical. So it can be an eye and nose irritant, irritant yep. right? So if you're sensitive to things like that, just keep that in mind. Have people use super glue with great effect to seal cuts? Yes, yes they I, have. I'm a living example. I've had some serious cuts that definitely need stitches. I just glued them. Also, they used it during the Vietnam War. There was a lot of like use in the Vietnam War of super glue, right? Sure, uh, but there are medical versions. Yeah. They are very similar to super glue. They just don't have the kind of the bad effects of regular yeah. super glue. So liquid stitch, glue, glue stitch, I think. Yeah. Dermabond is like the one you get in the ER. Yeah. Good luck finding that. In either of these kits, I didn't hear you mention them. I, do you have? I don't have any in here. There's some okay. in the, big boy the kit, one we're talking about. Which gets us to the big boy kit. This big boy kit is from My Medic, and we want to give My Medic just a quick shout out before Jimmy dives into this. They sent us a couple kits to check out. We told them what we were doing. They're like, oh yeah, we'd love to do something. They're not a sponsor of the video, uh, but they did send us some stuff to check out that we requested after Jamie did a bunch of research. Exactly. But I do want to mention really quick, we do have a sponsor. And the sponsor for this video is Boker Knives. So as you guys know, Boker recently came on as a sponsor of the channel. We're super excited about it. We did a big documentary on Boker Knives a few years back, which was a blast. And uh, Karsten and the whole team over there are just amazing. So thank you, Boker, for being a sponsor of the channel. It helps us continue to make rad stuff like this. And as you guys know, when we have a sponsor for the channel, it buys them some space on the channel, but it doesn't buy them the ability to tell us anything of what to say or how to say it or when to say it. As you can see, we're talking about first aid kits. I don't think Boker makes first aid kits. They, they do, do make, make something really cool that I really, really like. They do something really cool that we were talking about, hey, would be a great addition to an EDC kit or even an IFAC or something like that. The Atlas is, yes. uh, is what this is. The Atlas is just a really neat knife from Boker. Really thin, really cool designs, very collectible, lots of different handle materials, blade shapes. There's even some blade steel differences. Mm -hmm. Jamie's actually gonna be replacing his Cold Steel Lucky in his EDC pack with this uh, multi-tool one. What's the name of this one? Uh, it's just the Atlas Multi. Yeah, well, Atlas Multi. So it has scissors and it has uh, a knife, which is really cool. And these things go for like 26, 28 bucks up to like 40 ish bucks. Yeah. And you can get less expensive steel or you can get like a D2. Um, so, anyways, you could totally throw this into like an EDC kit or a first aid kit, but mainly they're just really cool and we're stoked to have Boker uh, on, on the channel. Thank you, Boker. You guys will be seeing a lot more of these on the channel because we're really digging them. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna carry one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going with the priority thing that you mentioned with the, the backpack kit, mm -hmm. this is your car kit. You've got the tourniquet and you've got your trauma shears right. right out the gate. It's worth noting that this tourniquet needs an actual tourniquet holder right now. It's kind of loosely <laughs> put yeah. on with yeah. Velcro, so I'm gonna get a tourniquet holder for that. But this is where I would probably carry it. There's kind of like some interesting tools and things that you need right away in a trauma kit, right out the gate on the outside. Trauma shears, can we talk about trauma shears for Let's a second? Let's talk about trauma shears for a second, because Jamie has been nerding out on trauma shears, and it's really been fun because it's not an area I've ever thought of or looked at, but uh, let's nerd out on trauma shoes. They are the best pair of scissors ever. You can cut through basically anything with them. You wanna cut through somebody's jacket? Cool, it'll do it. You wanna cut through somebody's spare change? It'll do that too. <laughs> Yep, true. <laughs> so you can cut through pennies and quarters with trauma shears. <laughs> this is the Leatherman Raptor. I didn't go for the Raptor personally for me because I didn't want to unfold stuff when I had to reach for something, so I yep. just had regular trauma shears. Because well, as a professional, you had a pocket that was specifically yeah. for trauma shears, right? Exactly. And obviously you're not trying to unfold it when you also are probably like have your hand on somebody either helping with bleeding or holding them down if they're exactly. worried or whatever it was. I'm, I'm big about one-handed use stuff. Yeah. That being said, you can store this in the holster open, so yep. that, that is an option as well. I think the Leatherman Raptor is really cool to stick on a bag or something though, yeah. because it's super compact and it's a super high quality pair of shears. They are expensive. They're probably the top when it comes to price mm. of trauma shears. You can kind of go down a little bit. You can get things like the X shears, which are in the 40 to $50 range. Fantastic pair of shears all the way down to $5 on Amazon. If you're only gonna use it once, Sure, why not yep. do it? This is great. It's got the shears, it's got a O2 wrench, it's got a ring cutter, so also great for cutting wire, anything like that. So just as an EDC tool or a truck tool, 
check out a pair of Just throw, 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 throw them in your box. truck. They're great. <laughs> They're great. So I have that on the outside so it's easily accessible. So there's two different versions. There's a big one and a small one. Check them out if you're interested. I also have another cat tourniquet on the outside of here. High vis orange flashes real great with this red. It's, it's not about looking cool. cool, it's about getting the job done. And this is something else that I, I, I want to focus on just really quick is you'll notice that so let's say, let's say that you kind of go with a tiered system, which we're really big about when it comes to EDC stuff, right? Like we're very much like, here's what's in my pocket, here's what's in my EDC kit, here's what's in my backpack, here's what's in my truck, right? And I'll, some of that might have a little bit of overlap, but I'm personally really big, and I think that you're the same, about not wanting a bunch of overlap in my EDC gear, right? But I think, and we had this conversation before we filmed, when it comes to first aid, you don't want to have a truck kit that also doesn't have shears and a tourniquet because you don't want to, did I forget my backpack today, did I not? Yeah, if you have a life-saving kit, it better be standalone Complete. Yes. No matter where it is, exactly. right? Yep. So you don't want to forget your tourniquet on your other kit or whatever is yep. in there, right? So make sure you have everything that you need. This is the MyMedic MyFac Pro. So they have the standard version, the pro version, the pro version comes with all life-saving kits. So if you need the life-saving stuff, which everybody should be trained and have that, make sure you get the pro version. And this basically came Ugh. as is, you added the shears and the tourniquet, is that correct? Added the shears and the tourniquet. Mm -hmm. So this has just a bunch of stuff in it. So it does come with a rat's tourniquet. There's some contention on whether this is a good tourniquet or not. Will it work? Sure. Yeah. Make sure you're trained on it. Uh, there's some communities that don't like it. There's some communities that do. So just I, make sure you know what you're doing. I learned on a rats and then later uh, learned a cat, the, the cat system. And I definitely like the cat better. Yeah, the, I, I personally feel that the cat tourniquet is much easier to apply. You got a lot of things in here. I'm just gonna breeze through it and I'll, I'll have a comment on how this is organized after the fact. But you have a tourniquet, gloves, you have burn stuff, you have all of your life saving stuff kind of over here, but not quite, which is my comment. So you have your hemostatic gauze, you've got band-aids, you've got a plethora of different gauze options, you have packing gauze that's not hemostatic, you have all sorts of different stuff over here. So you have kind of a lot of your bleed stuff over here. Going over here, you have some saline, you have your clean and prep mod, you have some topicals, whether that be petroleum jelly or there's some sunscreen in there and there's like triple antibiotic ointment, all that sort of stuff. Up here you have space blankets, you have blister mods, you have a chem light. People love to throw those in there. I guess they're kind of sort of useful. They're not particularly very bright. So yeah. if you love chem lights, good on you. Then you have some medications over here. Over here, they kind of section things out into airway. So you have a face shield, you have your different size NPAs. So you do have a 20 and a 28 French in here. So if you need pediatric nasal airways, you can do that. Then you have chest seals underneath that. You have a hydration mod, you have some cold packs, you have a tool mod, which is kind of cool. I think there's a thermometer in there. There's a little itty bitty flashlight for mm -hmm. checking pupillary reactions and all that stuff. And then underneath that, you have some wound closure stuff. So some Z-zips and some liquid stitch. Then there's just kind of some like different tools and stuff. So you got paracord, you have another pair of trauma shears back here. You have some tape, and I think there's some, some wrap down there. So there's a lot going on with this kit. Yeah. I have a comment on the organization of this kit. Yeah. So when you have a first aid kit and especially a first aid kit with life-saving stuff, you want all of your life-saving stuff in the same spot. I don't wanna to have to go hunting through this kit trying to find exactly like, where's my NPA or where's my packing gauze or anything like that. Well, and I guess, especially in a stressful situation, right? right? Like as somebody who hasn't worked in that field, and honestly, I've never been in a situation, luckily, I'm, I've, I've done the Highland maneuver twice to somebody who's choking, right? Um, but other than that, I've never done any sort of life-saving anything. So I, there's, I think there's the reality that a lot of people forget is the person that you're helping is obviously gonna be in shock, but like your level of adrenaline in that situation is also gonna be yeah. super high. So you, do, you don't wanna be like, if it were me, I'd be pulling all this stuff out trying to read it. Like, what is, what is this, right? Like, if you don't know, right? Yeah, yeah. I would organize this a little bit differently than how uh, my medic has it. I think it is a really good kit, yeah. as long as you can kind of move some stuff around. So I would probably take all of my life-saving stuff and just put it here and here, so I have it right here and I don't have to flip back and forth between any of that stuff. Another thing to note about my medic is they have all these things called mods, which is pretty dope and makes it super user friendly. I think that's what my medic does really well is they make everything very accessible. If you use something and you just want to go restock your kit, you can just go buy a burn mod or you can buy this. It'll be like a specific bleed mod that you yeah. have to get. Everything is restockable very easily. You just go on their site, you purchase the mod, you throw it back in here. And short of what you've put on the outside, this is how it came. 
correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think is really interesting because like I was pointing out earlier, it's really hard to find a kit that kind of has everything and not too much of everything. But as far as a truck kit goes or a car kit or whatever, you know, vehicle kit goes, this is pretty dang good, Yeah. right? Like besides a little bit of organization, you said you weren't super stoked on the trauma shears that are in there. Right? Yeah, but I think that's gonna be pretty standard and no matter what you yeah. get, they're not gonna put in very high. Yeah, dollar high, high dollar ones, right? But, but other than that, you were, you, you were said, you were like, I'm really impressed. And as we went through this before, not being, not knowing as much as you do, I was also like, oh wow. Like, cause when I initially opened it, I was like, oh, we gotta pull a bunch of stuff out. But it turned out like pretty well thought yeah. out. And there, the mod thing is really neat as well. There's obviously a lot of different things in here, but I don't feel like there's, you know, a ton of redundancy that you don't need. Yeah. Now, does this have, does this, uh, did it come stock with like, is there a boo-boo kit in here? I mean, the whole thing is kind of, uh, you you basically can take your life-saving stuff, right? right. So, you yeah. know, your tourniquet, your packing gas, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, yeah, yeah. et cetera. And then all the rest of that stuff, for instance, like you have all of your topicals it's all here. the topicals. You yeah. have Band-Aids here, you have blister yeah. mods, you've got Great. cold pack, like you have all these things that are meant to treat non-life-threatening right. injuries quality in of life stuff as well. Yeah. Cool. And if you get this MyFact without the Pro, obviously, like I said, it won't come with any of the life-saving stuff. It, it's basically just a very comprehensive boo-boo kit. That's the, that's the MyFact Pro. One thing to note about this bag, which is actually really cool. Also, medic tip for y'all. Whenever you have a zipper that's got sides to it, essentially, Yeah. put them in the middle. So you're not hunting for which side has the zipper. It's okay. always in the middle. Cool, so, so it's just like, whoosh, yep. you open, you're at it. The zipper's always in the middle. Cool. Uh, this bag is really cool because you can mount this via, it's a part of the Molly system, so it's got PALS connection points here. You can mount this somewhere. And once you unbuckle this front, like I have it, so you can see it's unbuckled there. Once you unbuckle that, I can take this whole back portion and I can rip. So this would stay. Cool. And this would come with you and it's got a strap. Cool. So, so you, you could, can just chuck this yeah. on yourself. So like you're going to see somebody in the ditch or something like that. You just yeah. throw it on and you march yourself down there. That's cool. So this this can just hard mount inside your vehicle. Yep. And then you unbuckle, pull, and now you've got slides, you, you can sling it on and go wherever you need to go. Exactly. Cool, that's really cool. I really like that feature. I think this is a really well thought out kit and a that's well awesome. thought out bag. Great, well, hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you are somebody who works in this as a professional, or have worked in this as a professional, we'd love to hear your feedback down below. If you haven't, I'd love to hear what courses you've taken because it really is, that's what it's about. It's about being prepared and it's about really taking the responsibility to be able to help yourself and help other people when we're talking about first aid. A lot of EDC is just fun, right? And it's about being prepared, but it doesn't really require a very big barrier to entry. But I just wanna stress, this definitely does. To be able to do it right and to be able to actually help people, be able to actually help yourself, uh, there is a process involved with all that. Um, but we hope that you guys have learned something. We'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, love to hear what you're currently carrying. Love to hear if this has changed any of your philosophy at all. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.